Hi everybody, um, I wanted to make another video um, to follow up on the video that I made before about pity. I was thinking about this the other day, and I was thinking about the lessons that narcissism taught me, because we think, we talk a lot about um, the hurt and the burden of knowing all of this about the world, knowing that narcissists exist in the world, knowing the sort of damage they create in the world. But we never talk about the positive aspects of coming out of one of these relationships because it seems like um, the losses are so great that we never can really think about the gains until much later. And I think one of the reasons why we can't find the gains or the benefits of coming out of narcissism sooner is because of the brain injury that narcissism creates within us. It's very difficult to see the light at the end of the tunnel when a lot of your mental faculties are degraded and you have brain fog you can't think straight, you have anxiety, um, you're in a very, very dark, 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 dark place, mentally. But, at some point, you get to the point where you can reason through the experience on a level that you previously couldn't. And I'm at that place where I'm willing to look at the lessons um, along with all of the losses that happened as a result of me being exposed to the dark triad. Um, one lesson is what to avoid in life. I feel like life is just as much about what to move towards as it is about what to avoid <laughs> and knowing what I know uh, and studying what I've studied has given me an intuition about who I can trust and who I can't trust and it's an intuition that has been cultivated through, over the course of time because I remember when I first um, started making videos it was very very um, difficult for me to even communicate with people because all I saw were their dark traits and uh, I was triggered by people in general but that has sort of dipped away with time um, because I've met a lot of very interesting and very good people in the world and I can't put them in the same category as um, the dark triad personalities that I knew. So the ability to feel people, to intuit who's a decent person and who's not a, per a decent person, who's manipulative and who's not manipulative, is one of the gains, um, that I would say, that I have from studying this material and from being exposed to narcissists. Um, the second thing that I've learned, and again this came much later, is that anger is a drug, hatred is a drug. And if you think about it, people that are deeply on the cluster B spectrum have been swallowed up by their anger and hatred. Um, narcissists are some of the least creative people, some of the um, least original thinkers that I've ever met. Um, they're, in ca they're very capable of getting people to create things for them and putting a brand out there, but they're not capable of creating 
on a continuous basis because their mind is degraded by hatred. And over time I've realized that if I want to unburden myself from this experience, in addition to pitying them, I also can't hate them. Because hate activates the parts of the brain that are pushing me into that fight and flight mode pushing me into a place where I don't want to be, a place where I can't create, a place where I can't be a better version of myself. And <clears throat> if you want to create anything of value in this world, you can't hate anything. Um, that's the number one lesson that you learn from the narcissistic family unit, is that uh, as the scapegoated person, right? Uh, the scapegoated person is usually the most creative person, and narcissistic family units scapegoat the creative individuals within their family unit, the ones that look for conflict resolutions, because they want to live in hate, because they want to live in a very fearful, dark, place that continuously perpetuates itself and they're married to that emotion and if you want to unburden yourself from them not only do you have to pity them but you also can't afford to hate them um, you know and if anything you can look at them as a forewarning of what would happen if you continue to hate them you know, hate has a tendency to perpetuate itself and to, to duplicate itself <laughs> like a virus and eat away at your brain. So if you want a healthy brain that thinks rationally, that thinks on a creative plane, you have to let go of hatred forever, you know that's another lesson that I've learned and it's interesting because when I was first coming out of the trauma bond right I had to hate them in order to love me in order to respect myself and that's the irony is that in the beginning hatred is necessary like in order to um, truly extricate yourself from the narcissistic dynamic. You have to hate them and think, how dare this person manipulate me for all these years? How dare this person screw me over in such a covert way? How dare this person lie to me repeatedly? It elicits this primal hatred that forces you out of the situation you have to hate them in order to love yourself. It's like the Selena Gomez song, I needed to hate you to love me. <laughs> um, it's very true, but at some point um, in the process you realize that the hatred is holding you back um, from moving forward with your life, from seeing um, creation and from creating because it's it's how the brain is structured the narcissist on some level understands that if they can get you to hate them and hate them and hate them uh, that you will be their possession forever because of the strength of hatred and the strength of fear and the salience of these emotions these are emotions that are very very thick and heavy-handed you know, unfortunately, um, that's how the human brain evolved. In order to get out of that primitive space, <clears throat> you have to think through everything that you've experienced and everything you've learned and turn off some switches in your brain that cause you to hate them, that cause you to 
um, have this fear of them. Um, you know, I just want to know how many of you feel the same way. Because I've noticed when I think about them, when I ruminate about them, when I hate them, I get sick. You know, I get... My immune system doesn't function as well as it can. And that was also part of their master plan. Um, if you hate them, they still have a hook in you. They still can influence um, your day-to-day -day functioning. Um, what do you think? about this theory <laughs> but the moment when you actually reverse that hate and turn it into something like pity or um, an understanding that they will never create anything of value in the world um, you begin to unburden yourself and to liberate yourself from these toxic emotions that you've been holding and carrying for a long time. Anyway, kisses.